Sometimes it's not until something unpleasant or difficult arises that we realize that we have some subconscious attachments to certain situations. And recently I've just gone through an experience where something quite pivotal has changed in my life, um, which was unexpected for sure and um, sort of came out of the blue and wasn't necessarily something that I was in any way looking for or felt that I needed. And when this change occurred, it brought up so many resistances, fears, worries that all I wanted to do, and I think this is such a classic sign of the ego getting involved, is all I wanted to do was I just wanted to run away and I wanted to go back to how my life had been and to not embrace or adapt to this change and to see things wrong with it because in my head how my life has been up until this point has been so wonderful because I've just been able to find myself as in big self big s self find deep presence and peace and I'm not saying that like my external reality is perfect from an ego point of view, but through that imperfection and through things not looking how 18 year old Flo wanted it to look, I've found deep acceptance and peace and a real surrendering and letting go. And so when this new situation came into my life, I just really, really struggled to accept it and to be okay with it and instead I wanted to see that there was something wrong with it which immediately shows again a sense of separation, a sense of attaching myself to myself, my ego self, my small s self and to thinking that there is something wrong with the situation but ultimately when you regard non-duality and you're living in a place where you're practicing that you have to recognize that everything is you that what you see in another and what brings up resistance and anger and fear and worry, whatever the emotion might be, is a reflection of how you internally feel about yourself. For if you didn't judge yourself internally about that, you wouldn't judge somebody else for it. You would just see them in the wholeness and the oneness. But also when you are judging yourself and you are seeing fear and anger and upset, you're attaching yourself to the limited body, to the separate self and the separate identity, which isn't the truth of who you are. And as long as you keep yourself in that place, you'll never ever be able to make the world pretty enough or your image pretty enough or events pretty enough. It's never ever going to happen because that just cannot exist in the ego world. In a world of duality, it just doesn't occur. The only place that perfection and love and peace and wholeness really genuinely occur is in the knowingness of the oneness, is in the state of I am, is in aware presence and beingness, is in the atonement or the holy instant or whatever phrase or word you like to use. And so what's required sometimes is yes, to do some inner work, but, and for me, this is what happened recently, is I started to get some resistant negative thoughts about the situation occur in my mind. And at first I was aware of them, I was letting it go, but I couldn't, but they kept coming. And I couldn't quite see how it was okay. I couldn't quite see how there wasn't a problem here that I needed to fix this. Because again, like I said, this situation is completely new to me. And I'd liken it to perhaps, let's say you have a job, right? and you love that job so deeply and so wonderfully, and then you lose the job and the job goes and it leaves and you're made redundant or whatever it is. And you're left in tatters because you took a lot of your self-worth from that job. That job gave you, well, it gave you financial security, physical security. It gave you a social life. You had all your friends there. Um, you had a real sense of creativity and purpose and you were really enjoying that job that in fact, you started to associate your sense of self from I'm an employee at X company and I do this at X company. That's all you could talk about, right? And then you get made redundant and all that love you poured into that company and that job and your clients and all that kind of stuff, that everything just goes. And with that, you lose yourself. You lose this perfect, pretty egoic image that you made 
and all of the wonderful beautifulness that came from that and all the self-worth that came from that. And you realize that once it's gone, you don't have any of that. That, you, that, that was all false. It was all completely dependent on an external situation, which you feel you don't have any control over, but of course, everything is you. So on some subliminal level, you did want this to happen, but I'll come back to that. And so from that point, you literally feel at rock bottom. You have nothing, nothing to you anymore. And then from that, you start to rebuild yourself. You start to go to spiritual retreats. You start to open spiritual books. And from there, you actually have this amazing moment of finding your true self, of going beyond the body, of seeing the perfectionist in everything, the perfect meaning of everything. And you see that you needed to lose that job. You needed to lose that job so that you could be where you are right now, so that you could see that your self-worth being dependent on external realities in an illusory world is completely pointless and will never give you the happiness and love that you are truly seeking. And in fact, not only do you realize that, but you realize that that happiness and peace and love that you were so desperate for and craving for in that job is, has actually been within you all the time. And when you were feeling that love from the job or from the clients or from your bosses or whoever it was, it was actually just you letting go of the illusion and allowing your true self to shine through. And so from that point, you don't need a job. Why did you need a job anymore? You had one, it's gone. And now you have complete self-worth and autonomy from yourself. And then all of a sudden, you start to get offered jobs. People really want to work with you. People really want to hire you. And you are stuck in a slight loop because whilst you thought you were so independent and free and grounded in I am and all of these kind of things, the world changes and you're now having to factor in bosses again and colleagues again and it's different personalities and, and you don't need this. You don't need to put up with this and you don't need to report to anybody. You are doing fine by yourself. And that's when you realize that you had a bit of an attachment to losing that job and being self-employed or whatever it was, that you actually had created a persona from that. And that is another little egoic trick that you just didn't even realize was there. And that's okay, because this is all part of the journey. And I think for a lot of us, we're not just going to awaken overnight like that, because I can think I think it can be incredibly daunting and incredibly terrifying to just lose all your thoughts and to not know, to not know how to interact with the world anymore and to see things in such a different way. And for some people, obviously it does work and it is a beautiful experience, but even people like Byron Katie who had quite a sudden awakening from a very deep, deep point of despair, which she was in for about 10 years, still had to do a lot of forgiving and letting go after this point. And perhaps she still has to now, she has to check in occasionally because a thought has disturbed her peace to see that it does, it's not true and it doesn't mean anything. And so just because you may have been in restful I am presence for a good few weeks and then it gets shaken up doesn't mean that you've failed or you've lost again that is just an egoic thing it just means that there is a deeper level of healing to be done there is a deeper thing to let go of I had created an attachment to how my life was I thought that was where my peace lied and it had to look like that in order for me to be an I am and it was all subconscious because it wasn't until that changed that I realized that I was attached to it and that I should have no attachment, no attachment to if it should change, if I should become the CEO of a multi-millionaire company or I become a postman, that it shouldn't affect anything because you still have to practice non-attachment. And whilst that period of time was quite difficult and it brought up a lot of stuff and I did a lot of crying and all of those kind of things, I'm really grateful for it again because it was required, because I needed to let go again another level of ego, again another level of attachment, which I wasn't as aware of. And that's okay. It's okay because the universe will show it to you. You will be guided to let go of whatever it is that you're meant to let go of. And that is just so beautiful and so freeing and so wonderful to know that you're consistently supported and guided. And so ultimately you did create yourself losing that job because you're here to know your true self, 
to be a conduit of God's love onto this world, to be consciousness here in form and to spread that to other people. And actually by going through that self-love journey and awareness awakening by losing that job, you gain that for yourself. And now you're being asked to go into another workplace, to go into another office situation and bring that conduit of love, of God, of consciousness to that those people. And I don't know what the reason may be for. Only you can find that. And you might not find out straight away. It might occur over time. But as you continue to allow the day-to-day -day of your life to strengthen your practice, to keep you present and guided and grounded, to share that love, because again, what you give, you receive, to share that love to your new colleagues and bosses and clients or whatever it will be, the more you will align yourself with truth, the more you will just feel intuitively of what you can do, what you should do, what you should say, how you should act, and the more you'll see greater love and harmony in the world because you are being that love and harmony and that will just radiate out of you because we're all energetic beings. We're all just energy vibrating. And so what you're giving to others, you're simply just going to receive it back because like attracts like and that's who you are. So don't be deterred if you are having negative thoughts and you're getting attached to things again, having had moments of peace and bliss, that's okay. It's part of a deeper level of healing and journey and it's showing you that you still have some attachments to the world and that's completely okay too. You've spent a long, 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 long time being a body, believing you're a separate self. Let's not judge anybody here or judge anybody on their destination or their journey, but instead allow ourselves to give space to those who are still healing, to those that are resting daily in I am, and to know that it's all perfect. It's all perfect whether we're male or female, whether we're you know, having a job or not having a job, we own a house, we don't own a house, we live in England or we live you know, in Timbuktu. It's all just perfect and brilliant and it's exactly where we're all meant to be at any given time because we have this internal compass of love within us and that is who we are and that is what we should focus on not what's going on out there and not judging what's happening but instead seeing our thoughts seeing what's causing the difficulties and what we're believing and what we're attaching to and seeing what we can do to let go of that to remind ourselves of truth and to be present in all moments